Hello all, my name is Joe and in this course I'm going to take you through how to create photogrammetry models for films, TV and games. If you find this helpful please like and subscribe and hit that bell for more videos and don't forget to check out my website 3dassetlibrary.com for Unreal and Unity Engine assets. Also if you find this helpful please check out my Patreon below for exclusive content relating to photogrammetry games. So in the previous part we built our mesh from our dense cloud and also our mesh from our depth map. I'm going to use the depth map uh, for creating the texture on this obviously if you um, don't have you know obviously I, I do understand that lots of people don't have the most powerful computer so if you want to use your dense cloud um, from the previous uh, part that's absolutely fine it's exactly the same principle I'm just showing you both options here so what we'll do is we'll go uh, you can see here as I say it's got a texture overlaid on it but nothing's really clear just to obviously highlight this as I'm sure you can see yourself then things like the Levi's the stitching the logo up here is sort of it's there but not it's sort of almost em, uh, embossed into the mesh and um, so what we want to do is get the sort of the final texture so what we do is we right click on chunk process build texture and the texture type I like to do this first you don't have to do it like this I just I just like to do it to know that I've done it drop down to fuse select occlusion um, just leave the source data as a 3D model depth. Mapping mode is uh, keep UV, and I like to set my texture size at 8K. Can I believe this can go up to 16K? And then I like to shrink the resolution of the textures down into in my uh, texture software, something like a Substance Painter or a Photoshop. Um, under advanced, none of these can be ticked, so don't need to worry about that. We'll press OK. What this will do is it'll turn the entire uh, mesh white and highlight. Um, the occlusions, things like around the laces, you, you'll see in the creases, things like that. And this helps bring a mesh um, to life in 3D software. So what we'll do is we'll pause the video here and you'll wait until yours is done and then uh, restart the video. So as you can see here, um, we've got a white mesh and um, unlike the hammer, which had the predominantly all of it white and then the, just a bit between the wood and the metal um, had a shadow. This has got a lot of shadow, so it's got like, um, or occlusion, sorry. It's got a lot of, uh, around the the uh, heel here um heel join sorry all, all under the leather here um under the shoe laces we've got some in the crease um inside the boot there so um see underneath it's got the same so what we'll now do is apply the um final texture so i'll just move this around you don't have to do this just so we can see so right click on chunk process build texture drop down texture type to diffuse map and we'll uh, leave this as this undo uh, blending mode i'll just explain this so mosaic um, is the default i generally use that but if i want to sometimes certain say fabrics on i've come across on shoes um when they when they blend all the images together to get the texture sometimes you lose some of the detail it becomes almost a bit smooth um what i'll do is if that's the case i'll grab a copy of the mosaic one export it and then i'll uh, grab a copy of the disabled one and export that the disabled basically doesn't blend anything together you can get absolute chaos on that but sometimes you can achieve um higher higher quality textures and then what i'll do is i'll export it to uh, import it into something like substance painter or photoshop and um blend the better sections from say the disabled into the mosaic one to basically get a better quality texture um but we'll leave this for mosaic under advanced leave those as they are sometimes you'll get holes in your mesh this here although it um, is a hole is actually a hole in the boot so we don't need to worry about that but sometimes you'll get a little black holes um which means it can't the the, te uh, the, the, the um texture can't work out wh where a gap should be etc you can enable hole filling and nine times out of ten that'll solve the problem but what we'll do is we'll just leave those as they are we'll press ok if we pause the video here and continue after when yours is done. So after yours is done, you should get something like this. As you can see, the quality has really improved. We're getting the Levi logo here. We're getting the Levi um, uh, sort of leather tag here. This is how it looks on my boots. I'm happy with that. We're getting the sort of, um, I don't know what this is. Is it a leather mesh or something like that? And it's even got the wear in the mesh here. Um, we go around, yeah, we're getting the, the creases in the leather. Um, Underneath, yet yeah, we're getting all the Levi's. We're even getting the little lines in there and the scuffs where I've stood on stuff by the looks of it. Steps. Um, we've got obviously the dirt here. That is dirt. Um, uh, yeah, so that's all good. We're getting the little holes here. So as you can see, we are very happy with that. So um, that's basically how you generate um, a 360 degree scan and apply it to. Uh, a texture to it. Um, obviously, this is exactly the same method for textures using a dense cloud. Um, 
so you don't need to worry there. If you do get stuck, let me know, and I'm happy, more than happy to do a, a video for you or an explanation even. But as you can see here, this is this has turned out really well. So I'll just um, inside here. Um, obviously, we don't really need to worry about because we we could fill these holes in, um, or we could. Um, even yeah I'll show you how to do that so what we'll do here is we've got a few holes here so what we can do is we can fill these in by going to tools mesh close holes this will process it and what will happen here is you can see anything that's gone pink um, it will fill anything that's not pink it means it can't can't fill it's not big enough and then what you do is you just press ok get the selection tool here and just remove it and it's it's um oh select me boot there um, so you can see that's filled the gap uh, to be honest um, in a 3D software, I would probably cut this out anyway because it, you know a foot would go in there and it's not ever going to be seen by anyone. Um, or when you're taking your initial photos, what you could do is, you, for instance, you could put something like a, a a red piece of fabric in here, or even make something here. I think you can get is it like a shoe? They're often used in like shoe stores where they they push in there to fill the boot out. So if you could, you could even get one of those, which then would scan a lot better than say this. Um, really depends what you're trying to achieve. Obviously, if you had that in a computer game, something like that, or if you had a person's foot in there, doesn't matter. You know, it's turned out. I'm very happy with this. It's turned out very well. I'm sure you're happy with it as well. So what we'll do is we'll just finalize this section and then we'll move on into um, our next sections. So what we've done in this section is we've created our full 360 degree scan. And I'm really pleased with this. Um, it's turned out very well. Um, I'm sure you're pleased with it too. If yours has gone as well as this, if it hasn't, please feel free to contact me and I'll do my best to guide you through it. Obviously, you can apply this to many things. I'll give a few uh, example photo sets for you to use things like fruit, um, maybe some more shoes, etc. So you can just play about with them and um, have a go at scanning stuff so you don't have to worry too much about taking your own photos yet, but you can get the hang of how the program works. Um, and also have a look at how I've... Um, uh, set up the uh, uh, the photos, etc., and get into a habit of looking at it and thinking, yeah, that's how he's done it. Um, obviously, you can apply these to things that are bigger. For instance, you could photo scan um, a five foot set of uh, PA speakers. Um, you know, it's one of those, as long as your background is consistent, you know, and your lighting is consistent. So say you could, for instance, photograph them in a garage. As long as your lighting looks good, you could buy some uh, diffuse, uh, light diffusers. Um, to spread the light out nicely and um, you know you don't necessarily need a turntable because obviously try and get a turntable for something that big you probably have to build yourself um, you can manually move the object yourself um, as long as the tripod is staying in the same area and that your object is staying in roughly the same area you shouldn't have any problems um, obviously this is more for items that you can move about you know you can't really go into the countryside and say well i love that cliff there i'm going to take a picture of that cliff you can't flip it over so you know bear that in mind um uh obviously this is uh, something like this is ideal for a 3d modeling you know you quickly there you, for me to do this would probably take me 15 minutes to get this done to this boot to uh this uh, final model here and then all you've got to do is just export it out which I'll show you in the next section and um, I'll show you a few other little things there um, that we could do so um, yeah we can see here we've got an incredibly high detailed uh, render here say I've got a hole in my boot so don't worry about uh, that too much um, we've got some quite a lot of detail achieved from the pictures here and overall it's been um, a very good scan so let's move on to the next section